Telomid have a pretty extensive wedge collection, but which model should you be gaming? Today I'm going to take all three out on the course and see what the differences in performance are. Let's get started. Now, first of all, I just want to touch on the new Milgrind 3 wedge because it looks significantly different to the previous offering. From the back, it's a lot smoother. We have less sharp edges, but then over the ball, it actually looks quite a bit smaller and more pear shaped. So definitely some big changes there. Now I've got 56 in both of these and I'm gonna hit a couple shots here. I want to see if there's any changes in the ball flight, particularly the height, because this year TaylorMade have changed the center of gravity in these clubs. So each loft has a specifically designed center of gravity. So if it's a higher loft, it's moved higher up the face and that's designed to bring that ball flight down on those pitch shots. That's definitely something I could do with some help with. So it's gonna be really interesting to see if there's a big difference in the ball flight. First up, let's hit last year's model and then we'll go back to this year years and see what the differences are. Nice strike and contact, but definitely a pretty high ball flight. It's got a really interesting to see now in comparison how the mill grind three does. Interesting, definitely lower. Also looks more spinny already. Yeah, that's one a lot. The advantage of clean wedges and new grooves, hey? I could hit wedge shots with that all day. The ball fly is just so nice and stable and I love the height of it too. Now, if you're someone who's choosing between this and the heighter option, it's quite interesting to see what the differences are. Now, visually over the ball, I wouldn't say there's that much difference in terms of shaping. Obviously, we've got the full toe grooves on the heighter, which is a visual difference, but the shaping's not drastically different. The biggest thing you're gonna see is that the sole of the heighter is a lot bigger. Now, this should give you a little bit more forgiveness in that strike if it's not perfect. So let's have a go and see how it feels comparatively yeah you can just feel it kind of almost bounce glide off the grass a little bit more the strike feels a little bit easier like I didn't have to strike it perfect and in terms of height they were pretty similar for ball fly <laughs> I actually think I stuffed that quite close so maybe I should be using this one instead across both though a key thing is really nice feel through the ball good ball flight control and good spin too. I think we're probably gonna see bigger differences when it comes to the short game around the greens, especially bunkers. I suspect you're gonna get a little bit more forgiveness out of these. So I've come up to the bunker now and I've left myself one of those really horrible like 30 yard shots. But that's because I've got 56, it's gonna go a bit further so I wanted a little bit of a longer shot to test these out with. Now first I'm gonna go with the milled grind three. This has 12 degrees of bounce compared to 10 with the high toe, but there is quite a big difference in the soles here. And I think this shot is probably one where we're gonna see the difference in that the most. That was actually a really nice shot. Now let's see if there's any difference in terms of the strike, the feel through the sand with this less bounce, but bigger sole on the high toe. Now I would say over the ball for me, I actually feel more comfortable with this out of the two. I just feel like when you open it up, it sits nicer behind the ball. That's probably just a personal visual thing, or I'm not sure if it's just the way that the full grooves sit across the face. So my strike wasn't as good then. I caught it a little bit thin, but you can really see the level of forgiveness you're getting for this because it hasn't finished that much drastically further away than the other one. Let's just hit one more and see if I can get that strike a little bit better. Oh yeah, that was really nice. To be honest, I'd be really happy with the performance of either of these from this bunker. But I think if you're someone who's quite steep and hitting down to the ball a bit too much out of the bunkers, this is gonna help you out more just from that thicker sole, giving you a bit more forgiveness of strike. Now, if you are someone that digs a bit from the bunker or doesn't feel comfortable manipulating the face, kind of opening the club up to get that high shot, this club is definitely gonna be of interest to you. Now, this is the Bigfoot high toe. 
potentially one of the coolest names in golf and also one of the clubs that offers the most forgiveness around the green. We've got a massive soil here, it's really wide and we've also got 15 degrees of bounce. So this is going to help you get out of the bunkers without necessarily having to open the club face up and hit that high floaty shot. Really you can almost set up to it square and simply just chip it out the bunker. So. Let's hit a few shots with it and have a go. Now, I love the visual of this over the ball because even though it's designed to be kind of game improvement style, it looks exactly the same to the rest of the high toe line in this position, which is definitely really comforting. And also it means you don't have to stand out with having like that different kind of wedge. But you can feel how thick the sole is. It's definitely gonna make a difference to the strike. I'm gonna hit one here. I'm not gonna open the face up at all. And I'm just gonna see what the flight and the distance is like on this fairly short-sided bunker shot. This feels very bizarre to me doing this. Okay, so you can see that came out pretty low, although this is quite a high bunker, so it did get quite a bit of height on it. But I've just hit that like a normal chip shot and it's gone about eight foot past the pin. So that is a really easy way to get out of this pretty tricky greenside situation. Now let's hit a few where I kind of mess around, opening the face a little bit and see what kind of shots we can get with this. So I went for kind of a half open face then. You could see I got a lot more height on it, but didn't quite take enough sand, so it's gone a little bit too far. Yeah, that was really nice. So I think the key is here, you still can get a bit of a variety in your chip shots. If you do want to occasionally open the face up and hit that higher shot, this will allow you to, even though it's got that thicker sole. But really the idea is, if you're someone who struggles with bunkers and you just want something that's easy to get out with, this is a great option. Now, in terms of around the greens, my worry always with the big foot is, how well it's going to perform in these other situations. Is it just a specialist bunker wedge or can you use it for other shots? So we've got some balls in the rough here and also on the kind of tight lie of the fringe. I'm just going to hit this compared to the normal high toe and see how the performance differs. I got actually a really nice strike there. You can feel how it's actually giving you a bit of forgiveness and bounce off the rough. So I think from this situation, it performs really well. There's probably not going to be a massive amount of difference between this and that, but let's just check. I need to get the speed of the greens a bit better, but both of them were struck really nicely and I really liked the turf interaction and I'd be happy playing with either of those around this situation. But let's see how that varies now in the fairway. So let's start with the big foot first. Straight away I can feel <laughs> There is a lot of bounce on the sole there and kind of the leading edge of the club is sat up a little bit, which would make me slightly nervous on this shot. I think you almost have to strike it even better with that situation to kind of get a good result. I nipped it pretty good and struck it nicely, but I could definitely feel the sole bouncing off the ground there. If it was any firmer, I probably wouldn't feel comfortable using this club. I could probably loft it down and do like a chip and run, but something where you just want to use that loft of the club, the bounce is going to be making quite a big effect there. Now straight away, this feels more comfortable. There's less bounce, the leading edge sits lower to the ground and just feels a lot easier to swing and hit the shot. Yeah, really nice strike. So quite a big difference there in terms of how you're gonna play the shots around here. But for me, I think if you're going for a big foot, you can use it out of the rough, you can use it out of the bunkers, but I then would have kind of a second backup wedge, maybe it's a 54 that you use for those tighter lies. Okay, I'm gonna do exactly the same test here, but between the mill grind three and the high toe option, and just see which scenarios each kind of works better from. So let's start with the high toe first. Now I've got kind of a mid to long left pitch here and it's up a two tier green so it's probably going to react quite nicely out of this rough and I'd imagine probably between the two there's not going to be that much difference in terms of the feel through the strike but there might be in terms of spin. Not bad, slightly heavy, but to be honest, this club's so forgiving through the bounce and the strike that I kind of got away with that bad strike.
definitely struck that a lot nicer, but it's spun up a lot quicker. It's quite interesting how over the ball, there is that big visual difference between the full face grooves and the smaller grooves here. And I think for me in terms of strike, I actually prefer these smaller grooves because it gives me a smaller target and it actually zones in on the strike rather than me feeling like I could hit it anywhere on the face. But obviously that's just personal preference. Now, if we move up to the fairway, let's go high toe first again. This actually sits really nicely and flush to the ground. I would have no problem using this here. Best shot so far. You can actually notice actually that I can nip it a little bit better with that. The strike is a little more precise, which is quite interesting. That was really nice. To be honest, I'd be happy with both of those shots and they've both finished within a foot of each other. In terms of performance so far, it's been really hard to split these two. So let's go up and hit a few longer shots and see if there's any difference. It's got about 100 yards here with my 52. I really want to see if there's any big differences in ball flight. Now, typically the high toe has more weight high, so you would think it'll bring the flight down compared to the mill grind three, but let's see if that is actually the case. Now we're into the wind here, so a lower ball flight is really gonna help me out. I can't say it was excessively low, but it was a really nice flight. It just kind of went straight through, straight through the wind and held its line really nicely. I have to say, I do just love this copper look. I think the fact that the whole club is copper is really nice. The new raw face sits really nicely on this and it kind of just feels a bit quirky. And I do really like that. I didn't strike that as good. It was a bit heavy, but the ball flights were almost identical. But I do think this club gave me a little bit more forgiveness off the slightly thicker sole, given the bad strike because they've both ended up in basically the same place. Let's try hit one more with a similar strike and see if the ball flight changes at all. That was bare, but to be honest, the ball flight stayed pretty much the same. There's really not much to split these two. 70 yard bunker shot. One of the trickiest shots in golf. So will either of these give me an edge? Nice strike, but definitely not far enough. Spun a lot with that too. I think I need a longer club. That definitely got the nearer of the two though. Oh, that was good. Yeah, the smaller nature there kind of just let me get through the sand a bit quicker. That's pitched right next to the pin and spun nearly back off the green. Definitely some serious spin with these new grooves. Now, I'd normally use a 58 for this, so it's gonna be interesting to see how I can get a 56 to stop that shot. Oh, that was really nice. Somehow I managed to leave that shot short, which I wasn't sure was possible with that loft. That was a really nice shot too. And it's actually finished closer, but I would say this one kind of flew out a bit more and ran out to the pin. Whereas I had a bit more spin and stop with the mill grind three. So I think in this situation in summer where it was quicker, this would have probably finished quite a bit past where that one would have got up to the pin and I would have had the stop to kind of control it. So in terms of control, probably was slightly better with the mill grind three, but then I think this was probably easier to hit and easier to get out. So if you wanted something that's more forgiving and is gonna help you out in the bunkers, maybe look at the high toe. To be completely honest, there really isn't much to split these, but I would say in these scenarios where precision is really key, such as from a tight lie or in the bunker on that long shot, I do feel like the mill grind three just has a little bit of edge in terms of clipping that shot really nicely. I can just feel the sole of the other one slightly on shots like this.
But to be honest, both of these have performed so well, I'd happily put either in play. I think it really comes down to a personal preference in the end. A big thing is going to be visuals. There's a lot of difference in terms of the club face here. Do you prefer that more traditional look with the groove just in the centre of the face, or do you want a full face? Do you really like that copper look on the high toe? Both of these are packed with extra technology. You've got the raw grooves for the extra spin, the micro grooves for more spin, and you've got that higher centre of gravity, bringing down that ball flight, which is going to be really beneficial, specifically on your pitch shots. Both of these are put in play in tours around the world, so obviously they're both great products. I think if you're someone who's probably low single figures and really wants some extra precision, I'd probably go for the Mill Grind 3. The high toe is also a great option, but possibly gives you a little bit more forgiveness, slightly wider sole, a little bit more forgiveness in terms of the strike. If you're someone who's really steep in bunkers or chip shots around the green, take a look at that big foot. I think it's really gonna help you out. Right, that's all for today. If you have any questions about either of these, feel free to put them in the comments below or drop me a line on Twitter or Instagram. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications too. And if you're after more golf content, head over to the National Club Golfer social media channels for more.